the third series of Mighty Boy EV, and um, this is February uh, 2011, and we're, I guess, uh, about two years on from when Eric did the first couple videos, uh, which uh, basically were the initial test drives, and uh, there have been a number of changes in the last uh, couple of months. We've switched over from the uh, AGM, the heavy AGM uh, power sonic batteries to uh, some more state-of-the-art lithium iron phosphate cells. Okay. Yes, these are uh, 2480 amp hour Sky Energy or China Aviation lithium batteries. Um, they're a bit of an uh, overkill for this project. The uh, reason I went to 180 amp hour cells is the uh, continuous C rating is uh, that's, this vehicle needs. It's well within that parameter. So uh, we're looking at um, just under 15,000 watt hours, 15 kilowatt hours of um, capacity now. And weight wise, we're uh, significantly less. Um, this used to weigh in about 210 uh, kilograms, and we're down now down to uh, under uh, 140 kilograms. And that's what the cells look like. They're uh, fairly large uh, little animals. The uh, continuous uh, C rating and charge and discharge is about 0.3 C, and uh, they can run something like 3 C for. Uh, about 30 seconds, I believe it is. They're uh, mounted in uh, the original battery holder that was made for this vehicle. Um, and as I have mentioned uh, on the website, the Australian dollar a few years ago crashed, so I couldn't afford to put Thunder Skies in at that stage. So uh, I went to Plan B, which was the lead acid. Um, so uh, these fit in, and they're actually a, a press fit. Uh, in the holder to pre prevent any swelling in the sides of the batteries. Um, and they uh, have a couple of fiberglass straps here which you can use to extract the, the cell. A little bit of talcum powder is put in to make, make them slide in and out. The BMS modules that are used on these are uh, from uh, EV Power in uh, Perth. And the inside unit is uh, or the controller unit is mounted in the in the cab of the utility. Uh, you can see all the strapping which is supplied with them. Um, the other thing that's fairly important when you're doing this is to make sure that you have good strain relief on all of the uh, the wiring because vibration down the track is your main issue. And you can see sort of some of the goop that's also used just to prevent any movement. Uh, there's also Ken Hall's little pack tracker modules. Um, which are used uh, on each cell, and that essentially acts as my fuel gauge. It's uh, reasonably okay to use, so uh, it gives you an indication anyway. And I've maintained the cycle analyst uh, that was originally used. Uh, in addition, there's a uh, little smoke detector, which uh, there's a cover that fits over here, so it actually can sniff any smoke that should happen uh, if anything, any insulation tends to burn or anything. These are designed for caravans and trucks, uh, and they have a facility for external sensor, uh, buzzers, alarms. So there's one mounted externally, and there's also one in the cab. Uh, the other thing which uh, is mounted is a 60 degree alarm, uh, temperature over temperature alarm, which just, again, brings a buzzer on inside the, uh, the cab, and if uh, the rear area gets above 60 degrees. The other thing that's happened in the last couple of years is there's solar panels now on the house, which uh, you'll see in a moment. And um, so power from the solar panels put back into the grid through the day. And in South Australia, we get a fairly good feedback tariff of around 50 cents uh, a kilowatt hour um, during the uh, days that we're getting producing power during the, the day. And at night, we tend to now charge um, off peak and we pay um, around 11 cents a kilowatt hour at the moment. Uh, so the vehicle simply is backed into this car parking spot 
plugged in uh, uh, just to this outlet here and um, automatically comes on about 11 o'clock at night switches off around 6 six thirty in the morning okay you can see in the uh, background here the eight solar panels that are located now on the roof of, uh, of our house and uh, each one they're sharp panels and uh, probably about 190 watts each the total installation is um, 1.5 kilowatts and um, typically we would be generating uh, on a, not a hot day but on a sort of day like today around 28 we would be generating around uh, between 9 and 10 kilowatts uh, per day from these panels. Uh, this is the uh, power distribution panel here. You can sort of see over here the inverter for the uh, solar panels and uh, it's got a readout of everything that's occurring. And inside here our uh, electricity authority has now mounted um, a thing called an interval meter and it's a meter which, uh, program for the off-peak which can be controlled by the authority so it actually has a little 2.4 gig antenna up here and they can actually on 15 minute intervals um, turn me on and off. And this is part of a trial that uh, our electricity authority is doing. Um, Eric has also got a similar arrangement. I think there's very few of us at the moment but they're going to, I, think, I believe the numbers are going to allow 50 of us to try this. And the reasoning is that um, if electric vehicles ever do become commonplace uh, in our city and everyone's plugging in uh, in the evening, then they'll be able to stagger the load and uh, manage the situation a lot better. Uh, okay, some of the other additions that have happened along with the, uh, with the upgrade to lithium-ion is we can see a little pack tracker here, and um, that's, you can sort of see it's in fuel gauge mode there now. Uh, not all that accurate, but it, as I say, it's more of a voltage measurement type thing, so it uh, tends to be fairly, fairly average in its indication, but it, uh, at least it's an indication. The other thing you can see if you look up here is that the addition of this uh, third, uh, or this uh, LED here, which is actually connected to the, to the BMS controller, and that indicates that there's a fault condition, along with the buzzer, which is mounted right in the... Uh, the controller. And we also have, uh, we've added a solar panel, at least for the, the dash clock. So uh, I can now say I have a solar panel on the, uh, on the EV. There's the panel there. Yep. <laughs> That's a neat little clock. <laughs> okay, you can see the, uh, the uh, battery management system, the controller. Uh, there's, uh, this controller is uh, suitable for uh, controlling two of these Alcan chargers. Each one of these puts out about 16 amps at uh, uh, designed for uh, 24 volt charging and um, has a little indicator here, a bit hard to see probably, but uh, indicates the stage of, uh, that the charger's in. It takes about five hours to uh, charge to about 60% uh, depth of discharge on these cells. Now I have a second second charger as well and I have tried it so these uh, controllers have been modified so that they can control two uh, battery chargers. So thus I can charge up to 32 amps. Um, the idea was that if I needed a faster charge I'd just have a little 60 amp Anderson connector in the back. The second unit could be plugged in if needed. Um, it's been tested, but I, uh, I find now that the range that I'm getting with these batteries is, uh, is a bit greater than I actually would, would ever need in my use. So uh, a charge really lasts me for uh, three to four days now. The other thing that uh, has been done is that I've switched from the uh, pressed steel wheels to uh, these lighter 12-inch alloys, which were actually an option uh, offered by Suzuki back in the mid-80s uh, for, the, for their imports. There were very few of them brought into Australia, and they're about the lightest I can get now, so my unsprung mass is about as low as I'm ever going to get it. And I was just fortunate enough to find uh, four brand new alloys that had never been used uh, up in Queensland. 
A couple other things have been changed over. The side lights have uh, got a more efficient uh, lens and light put in them now. And if you go around the front here, one of the problems that this uh, car had was the headlights at night were absolutely hopeless. So I've um, switched over to a, uh, a Hella H4 Plus um, globe in these uh, new housings. And the light from those is, uh, is just fantastic. It's just like driving any of the cars made today. So uh, the 1985 lights were uh, very basic. And the other thing is we're looking at standard labeling now, uh, similar to uh, our propane or LPG vehicles that uh, require labeling, uh, with the little electrical symbol indicating that it's an electric vehicle. Here's a little gift from Eric. It's uh, one of the little uh, Life is Good stickers from who? Red? Red, bu Red Bubble. Red Bubble dot com. Um, giving us the atomic number and the atomic mass of lithium and iron. How good is that? Life is good. Yeah. That's one of the other differences. We've now modified the, uh, the uh, gear shifter lever so that um, first and um, second are locked out. So. Uh, really drive or uh, is really fourth gear and that's all I've ever used. I have allowed th third gear to be selected but I've never actually used it yet. So it's basically fourth and reverse from the original gearbox. If you remember in the first videos we had a problem of actually mis-selecting and I think we selected second gear which obviously over revved and the rev cutout came in during our first test drives. That gets over that sort of problem. thing you notice is the difference in weight. Um, the uh, rear of the vehicle now rides about 50 mils higher than uh, it did with the uh, oh, yeah. extra weight. The vehicle weighs in at just under 690 kilos now. So, uh, yeah. That's amazing. In acceleration, it all depends on how I program the controller, but at the moment it's about 9 or 10 seconds. Um, so it's out fairly well into uh, in the traffic. And, Probably a fairly good compromise where it's at now. And what sort of range do you get, Bruce? Uh, I've only ever used it up to 100. And, uh, depending how hard I drive it, it would certainly do better than that. So I typically recharge after about 50 kilometers. So we're cruising along at 60 now. It's got plenty to pick up. Oh, yeah. So it's a very different car to drive. And real beauty of the lithium-ion uh, technology is the flatness of the curve over the usefulness of the battery. So with the lead acid, I was really starting to suffer after, uh, well, in the end, probably 15 kilometers, 10 kilometers, 15 kilometers, the performance really dropped off. Uh, whereas this technology just stays the same, right? right basically to the 80 percent, 90 percent depth of discharge. So you'd only take it to 80, 70, 80 percent? Uh, yeah, in practice I'll never take it past probably 60. It certainly goes well. Yeah, for a 72 volt system it's uh, good. We're doing about 60 kilometers an hour and we're doing about 3,000 RPM. Uh, yeah, it's 
so 90 it's doing about 46. So it's got about 400 left in it. Right. I don't know what that would correspond to. You work that out. <laughs> you can see even at this speed now with these batteries, it's got a bit of pickup even around 80, which it yeah. never did before. And current wise, we're drawing long amps. <laughs> Take your foot off, yeah, <laughs> take your foot off zero amps. That's the way. And there's Harbour Town. Shopping centre. The airport in the distance. Now the area that, the city that Eric and I live in, unless you live up in the hills, there's very few uh, 80 kilometre zones that we have. So well, this is it. This is basically it, yeah. So you've got to go way up north to find one. So if we can get that truck moving up here, we can show you the acceleration to 80. Uh, it's not do it. <laughs> Come on, man. So that's about 9 seconds to 8 seconds to 60. Uh, you see, it's so light now, and you've got yeah. such a bigger capacity cell, big motor. Nothing holding you back anymore. So that's drawing about 100 amps at 75. Turn. Just a bit uphill here, but we'll just Yeah, so. Nice area, isn't it, of South Australia? Yeah, it's the, with the beach so close, the city so close, everything's, everything's quite handy. About to see the ocean. Very clear lately, though. You yeah, notice that the foreshore, the, the water on the foreshore is very, very clear. Across the beach here, this is where I go for a bike ride most mornings on oh. the beach down here. 20 kilometer away. That's what I should do is get some exercise. <laughs> With the electric car now I do a lot less exercise yeah. than I used to. Adelaide Beach and that it's uh, maintained some of the natural sand dune along here. Beautiful. A little bit of water sports out there. Look ahead, you can see one of our Henley Jetty. Yep. There you go, yeah. People out exercising their dogs and themselves. Wow. Yeah. There's the he hasn't got far to go to do his surfing. No bus. It's snowy. Oh yeah. That's one thing you notice in an electric car is certainly you do. You're certainly not producing any smell of your own. The other uh, smell everyone else. Interesting thing is uh, the range of 100 kilometers, how far 100 kilometers of driving actually is in a built up area. Okay. Yeah, people don't realize how small a distance they drive. That's right, yeah. A long trip for me is about 30, 35 kilometers. Go to the city, suburbs, yeah. do a bit of shopping here and there, go yeah. back home, 35 kilometers. Yeah. <laughs> Weight distribution now is just about spot on 50 50. So, so it should handle well. Yeah. It's quicker. We're not going to beat them. So. Getting into the 80 zone again. Getting south. 
going to be able to no, show you the acceleration. Everyone's going to slow today. As usual in Adelaide, it's an 80 zone, but everyone sticks about 70. I got stuck in the lift there once for three quarters of an hour. Mm. Wasn't much fun. <laughs> I think we slightly overloaded the lift. Yeah. Finally got it uh, moving. Apartments. Oh. Entertainment places. <laughs> Can't see it very well. Grand Hotel in the background. I have to start an EV tour company. <laughs> Good truck. Now there's one of our Adelaide trams. Electrified? Yep. Yeah. 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 This guy across. These are trams. People holidaying and eating. Spots to see. Lots of places to eat. Whoa. I think he might have crashed into something actually. Yeah. Car going very very slow. Another Adelaide driver. It's uh, 50 kilometres an hour, not five. <laughs> Five's being generous. I think they might be looking to, for somewhere to park, maybe. Oh, good yes, signal. there we go. Look at that. Interesting to take the eye move on bumpy road and see how the short wheelbase handles. Yeah, we will. Desalination plant starting up. 
expensive. Up in the millions of dollars. Tighter. slight difference in um, performance versus temperature too. I don't know if you've noticed that. A 12 degree morning versus a bit sluggish. 42 degree afternoon. Yeah, yeah. yeah I've heard the, the lithiums a lot now. They, uh, they like to be a bit warm. Yeah. Okay, a little cycle analyst is giving us uh, some data here at the end of our trip. So, current pack voltage is uh, 78.8, and we've traveled. Uh, whoops. Okay, we've taken. We've traveled 28 and a half, or well, 28.6 kilometers. We've taken um, about 49 amps out of the pack, amp hours out of the pack. Next screen. Okay. Not hooning around, we've done 125.6 watt hours per kilometer. Watt hours from the pack is 35.79. Um, regen doesn't matter. Okay, our minimum voltage out of that was uh, 64 volts. Maximum current was 513.9. We've been away for about 38 minutes. Maximum speed was 89.1. Average speed 46. That doesn't really matter there. Okay, that's it. Okay. Okay. Well, there's uh, pretty well nothing's changed in here from when we pushed it out of the out of the shed. Um, How hot's the motor after? Oh. You reckon? Maybe 45, 50. <laughs> yeah. um, when you're when you're running up around 90 kilometers an hour, it, it does have a slight temperature rise, but still you can you can hold your hand on it. And the controller? Uh, I'm not even warm. But that's got about 124 square inches of heat sink around it. You can just have a feel of that. Oh no. But, uh, it's just, um, just off ambient. Yeah, and all the electronics is basically all state relays and stuff are in there and that sort of falls out and everything else is behind there. Um, not much to see really. DC DC converter? Yeah, it's, uh, it's a Servcon one, it's connected full time. Um, Matter next to the battery. Yeah. Very yeah. good.